All right, what are you doing here? You got your thumb on the mic? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's happening? Okay, guys, there? it's it's Kevin Lee here, Aka the Tree Whisperer. We got an old, real nice looking French lilac here. Nothing too serious, but just a number of shoots now. A lot of these plants, you know, that's just what they do. It's sort of the, the uh, lilac pore mass. So what I've done over on this side is just make a little space so I could get in here. There was a number of ground shoots. And what I'm gonna do is just raise the front of this. We're gonna leave this guy. Looks pretty good, but you know, just so these guys got some access to walk around in their yard, get closer in here, mow the grass kind of thing. So you just look for the ones that are on the bottom like this that are just heading straight out. And I just, you know, and always just cut them first and then do my nice target pruning, my, my collar cuts afterwards. Um, and just a lot of the times when you're doing a shrub, which is a completely different animal than even the small tree pruning, um, a lot of the times you need to do it in steps. And so a lot of the times just getting in to be able to do the work, uh, you have to just make some space. So, and this one's kind of interesting. If we can get a close up here, this happens all the time. This is like welcome to nature and gardens is that if you look very closely, this stem of this plant is quite different than this one. And we follow this down, look where he started out. This one here is actually, and I can count the age of it, it's a one, two, three, four. That's a five-year-old little Manitoba maple tree that's hiding in there, hoping to try and make his way in this world like we all do. And uh, it's just a classic place. It's like behind the garage or in the alley or lots of places where you just don't go that often. You'll find volunteer trees. And it's a very good idea to just walk your property once a year and if you've got a plant there that seems persistent and it's stiff, you know, it's probably a little baby tree that's getting started. And no big deal, they're really easy to cut. I'll just make one cut with the loppers here and that one's gone. But the thing is, in places where you don't get to, back to the uh, no man's land, the alley, back behind the garage, is uh, the whole idea of a, just a, a safe place for those shoots to get started. So yeah, this side's looking pretty good. I've got the shoots out. We've made some space coming around. This one I stub cut just to get it out of the way. I'm now gonna just finish this off, make a nice uh, branch collar cut, which is the place in nature where uh, nature is designed for the branches to actually come off. And that idea of the branch collar and you know the branch's origin and where it's supposed to come off, that works for all woody plants. All trees and all shrubs all have branch collars and it's just a matter of getting used to them, reading them, finding where they are. And the tree loves you when you do that because what you've done by cutting a branch off in the place that it was designed to come off is that you've uh, made it as easy for the tree as possible to deal with that pruning cut. So um, it's always nice to do that. And you can you know, whack away at trees and a lot of people do and it doesn't seem to have that much consequence but actually you know it's all expensive and if you want to do the best for your tree you always work on woody plants from an energy level is every action you know moving towards helping that tree or you can use the same tools and do a tremendous amount of damage so it's it's learned to, good to learn a few basic things about working with the tree's natural systems and just keeping them as healthy as possible yeah so yeah as you can see here just a little crowded and i will just reach in here with the saw this is a japanese pruning saw perfect for this kind of work oh well, this is all hand tools um, the only time i would ever use a chainsaw on a plant like this is if there was a really big stem that was hard to get at or an old dead stem and we're talking you know a couple three four inches and at that point it's nice to have a little extra horsepower um, but most of the time, careful and, and uh, good pruning. Always done with hand tools. It's just the way to go. Um, you know, if you want to start, if you want to be happy with your work, show it off, you know, you can act like an old fashioned craftsman. And what that means is, you know, knowing what you're doing and having the proper tools that, so using hand tools is not difficult. These are all really high quality 
Felco lopper, uh, loppers here. That's actually a Felco lopper. Beautiful tool. It's the same as the hand pruner, but with uh, infinitely longer handles for a whole lot more torque, foot pounds. And between the secateurs and the loppers, which is just the big one, I don't make a lot of cuts, uh, collar cuts with this. It's because you're so far away, two feet away from the actual cutting blade here, you do lose control. And it's better to just, on the bigger cuts, just set the loppers down and make those cuts like right here with the, the uh, Japanese pruning saw. There you go. That's a nice collar cut. And what that does is gives the tree the best advantage to be able to close up and, and it, they don't heal, but we can use that word very comfortably and heal up its wounds. So trees don't like to have open spots like this. And you come back in a year and you'll see how the bark has started to grow in and then the next year grow in and that'll finally just close right up. So I'm just going to scoot over here and get over into this corner and just finish this part up a little bit. A couple of shoots here. Um, another huge part, you know, I've been talking about energy and what's best for the tree, but you know, that's cool and very important to have that in mind, but um, something that is also as important as a, a gardener or a person who just doesn't, likes being in their outdoor space is the look of things are very important. And so what I'm doing with this French lilac, uh, and we're here in Calgary, it is early April in 2019, and what I'm doing with this plant is, it's a pattern that I use that I call little tree. So somehow, what does that mean? Just imagine that these, all these stems, somewhere just below ground level here, actually just went into one trunk. And in a sense, they do. The, the shrub has a, an anatomy called, a piece of anatomy called a, uh, uh, the root crown. And so I think of the trunk like right there, and then it just splitting up into its major sections. So what we get to see when I do pruning in my pattern here that I call little tree, is we just show it off. It's like an open fan shape, Everybody has their own space in there, at least we'll have when I'm finished. It's a little tangled over in here yet. But uh, what happens is they all start off from the root crown, they go up and out, and it's just nice to have all of them with their own space. There's a big stub in here. And we'll just take this one off with the pruning saw. Um, a piece of dead wood. And I've got a couple of shoots over here, and I don't know if we got a before picture, but we certainly saw this side when it was pruned, and you can see what I've done just to redefine it. So the aesthetics, the look of things, when you've got really healthy plants, um, you know, you can play with things and do some some forms and, and you know, get into shapes that you find attractive. Um, little tree is a pattern that works very well for a lot of different shrubby material. It just shows the plants off really well, um, keeps the you know, endless sucker growth uh, under control. And, um, you know, another really good part about Little Tree is a lot of the times we have a canopy. And I think this is sticking out a little far. And these guys are going to want to mow here. I probably will end up taking this one off. You can see what that looks like with it gone. And it probably is better. Uh, we're just this is part of the game. It's a process and it's better to just start working sometimes and just see that, okay, now I left that, you know, because of this question. And now when we look at this now, you can see, yeah, it's kind of sticking out like a sore thumb a little bit, right? So that one can go too. So we'll just, just take the weight off of it, get it out of the picture. And then I will reach inside there and make the proper final cut down below. Uh, what else are we seeing here? Oh, the other part about uh, little tree that works very well is that, um, you know, when, it, when it's more of a vase shape like this that leaves from the base of the ground and comes up in a V shape, what happens is, and it's not the case in this specific garden right here, but a lot of the times people have understory plants, perennials, or they have an uh, open zone at the front where they want to plant annuals, and this will allow the shrub to still be beautiful, do what it wants. I'm never going to touch the top. That's all really healthy up there. And why would you cut off the flowers? Why would you cut off the flowers? That's what we have these plants for. They're beautiful flowers and they're fragrance, shaping and that sort of thing. You know, the, there is a place for that. And some people really love that look in their garden. But 
the continual shearing and shaping of shrubs always cuts off most of the flower buds. So leave that alone. There's no, no, no reason to get up there and, and mess around up there. There's no wires, there's no house, there's nothing. Let it, just let it be the plant that it was designed to be. Again, a uh, little tree open in the bottom, more of a vase shape instead of a ball. And what we get here is just lots of light and a really good look. So just reaching inside to get the last few shoots out of the corner here. I always tell the French lilacs from uh, some of the other lilacs, every woody plant has a distinctive bark feature. And so, you know, you start up here, it's young and smooth. And as we move farther down, you get into older and older parts of the stems. And this look here with the, uh, the sterations in the bark and it's starting to flake off like this shows that these are the oldest parts. This is the classic look. There's another very popular lilac in this part of the world called the Velosa lilac, and they stay smooth even when they're huge. They have a big uh, a feature on them, an anatomical feature called a lenticel, which is a big white uh, little uh, markings on the, on the trunk. These uh, French lilacs don't have that so much. So, yeah. Yep, let me go up the saw with this one. Right out of there. The way I bend that like that, I don't just pull it right through. If I did that, I'd probably tear the bark on the stems that are, it has to rub against on the way out. So what I do is just bend it out like that, and uh, it just doesn't have the same friction on these stems. It's a nice way of taking it out without doing a lot of damage to the rest of it. So yeah, this is looking really good. I want to move over to the other side again. There's another stub in here just to complete our look. And I will just make those couple of stub cuts, excuse me, and then this will be looking pretty good. Definitely good enough for this year. Now, don't overdo it. Don't ever think that you can do a permanent pruning job. The idea with plants, trees and shrubs especially, make your move, keep the plant healthy, water frequently when the 30 degree days come, and let you know, do your move, or moves, get the, the look that you like. You stand back and let the plant grow. Leave it alone, let it be, give it a year or two. You've made your move, and now let the tree make, or the shrub make its move. And in a couple of years, reconsider your pruning. So there you go. That's looking pretty good. Yeah. Maybe one crossing branch here, but generally what we've done is cleaned out the shoots, cleaned out the, the tangled stuff, got some dead stubs, got all the shoots, and there it is. French lilac, beautiful little tree. Have a great day.